Circuit breakers form the backbone of any circuit protection system. They protect against the most common electrical faults that occur and do so quickly, quietly and effectively. But how do they work? And is there anything that they won't protect against? Well, to answer that question, we're going to take this circuit breaker from the circuit protection range by BG Apart and take a deep dive into its inner workings. If you're watching this on any of our social media platforms, then click the link to watch it as part of our free training package. You'll get a certificate and it'll count towards your annual CPD requirement. If you're already watching it as part of that package, then top work, let's get into it. Once an MCB has been manufactured and sent out into the world, it's not really designed to be opened up and poked around in. They get sealed up in some way. This one uses these rivets that pass from one side to the other. So we're going to drill those out and get the covers apart. Inside here, you can see that there's a collection of various components all doing different things. In simpler electrical times, we could have confidently stated that the power would pass through here in a specific direction. But with the rise of things like solar PV panels that generate electricity being installed all over the place, it's now very possible that power would pass through here in the opposite direction. That fact led directly to a new regulation being introduced that means protective devices would need to be bi-directional if used to protect circuits connected to PV panels. We're covering that exact topic and what it all means in another video in this series. Fortunately, all MCBs in the circuit protection range from BG are bi-directional, so you're completely covered. But let's just assume for simplicity in this case that the power is only passing through this device in the traditional manner. It passes from the buzz bar to the circuit breaker via this cage terminal. There's a couple of important details on here before we even get inside. For example, the screw head itself is a bit unusual. It has a combination of two different driver styles. It's half posy, which you can tell by the little extra driving slots in the corners of the screw. But it also has a massive slot across the front of it that looks more like a slotted screw head. So which do you use? Well, both and neither. It's actually a specific screwdriver called a slotted posy. And looking at the head of one of these, it has the basic posy shape, but with a couple of wings here that drive the screw as well. This gives a better grip to the screw and allows for accurate torque setting, an essential and often overlooked aspect to installing circuit breakers. There's also these little grooves inside the terminal that provide extra grip to the conductor and keep it solidly in place. Then passing inside the MCB, the terminal connects to this short piece of copper braid and connects to the first important part of this device. At first glance, it looks like a straight piece of metal, but it's actually called a bi-metallic strip. The bi here means two and refers to the fact that it's made of two different types of metal welded together. As current passes through the strip, it does what current does and makes it hot. As the strip gets hot, it does what metal does and starts to expand. Because the strip is made of two different types of metal, they expand at different rates. And because they're welded together, one side expands further than the other, which means that the strip bends. Once it bends far enough, it triggers the tripping device in the breaker and disconnects the circuit. This part of the breaker provides protection against the type of fault known as overload. We're covering the different types of fault in a different video in this series. So check that out in our free training package. The bimetallic strip is really good at providing protection against this kind of fault because it doesn't overreact. Overload is not a good thing for a circuit, but it doesn't spell instant doom either. Most circuits can take a bit of overload as long as it doesn't last a long time. If it does, the bimetallic strip will do its job and disconnect. But as it takes some time to bend to the right degree, it won't trip quickly and disconnect a relatively healthy circuit. Now, just before we move on to our next aspect of protection, there's another important bit of kit in here that performs a very specific function. When a circuit breaker disconnects a load or a fault, it might be that there's large amounts of current flowing through the breaker. When that amount of current flows, separating two pieces of metal to disconnect the circuit won't necessarily stop the current from flowing instantly. That's because the air between the two contacts will ionize and start to conduct electricity. Once the gap between the two gets big enough, the arc will break. As the air around the gap in the contacts heats up, it will start to expand and move up into other parts of the breaker. The design of the breaker channels the hot air up into this little chamber and draws the arc with it. There's even these tiny holes in the back of the device for the hot air to push out through. These are known as arc chutes. As the arc gets drawn up, it encounters this device, which is known as an arc splitter, that gives you a big clue to its function. It's made up of several metallic plates held parallel to each other by insulating material. As the arc comes into contact with the splitter, it gets kind of chopped up and loses the ability to keep conducting. It's because it gets progressively harder for the arc to leap from plate to plate when they're isolated from each other. 
Now, the most likely time that large currents generate arcs that require chopping up is when a fault of negligible impedance has occurred. Again, we're covering what that is in greater detail elsewhere in this series, but it's enough to know that it makes really large currents flow. When a really large current flows, it's a sign that something's gone horribly wrong in a circuit. The bimetallic strip will eventually disconnect this type of fault, but it will take a bit of time to do it. And that's just not good enough. You want the breaker to trip quickly and disconnect the absolute casserole that's taking place down the cable. To achieve this, if we follow the path the current takes through the breaker, we come across this component. It's a coil of copper. When electricity passes through a conductor, as well as heat, it also generates a magnetic field. This field can be intensified by wrapping the conductor into a coil. The strength of the field will also be proportional to the current flowing in the conductor. So when a very large current flows in the event of a fault, the magnetic field instantly becomes stronger. This strong magnetic field can then attract this soft iron armature into the coil, and this triggers the circuit breaker to operate and disconnect the outgoing circuit. Because all of this process takes place in a fraction of a second, the device will react to a serious fault of negligible impedance in approximately a tenth of a second, and that is pretty snappy. Then, finally, that connects to another cage terminal. Now, if you're watching on our training platform, then answer the multiple choice questions that follow and move on to the next video. If you're watching on one of our social media channels, then click the link to move over to the free training package and get yourself a certificate. Or you can watch the same video in the series right here to find out what makes the difference between a unidirectional and a bidirectional device. All that remains is to say thank you very much for watching.